To make sure this is clear, let's walk through how a user gets a token. The process begins when a user at a browser or the kind of client requests the token from some STS. That STS is provided by an identity provider, commonly called just an IDP. Once it receives the request, the STS must authenticate the user. That is, it must make the user prove it is who it really claims to be. How does it do this? Any way it likes. One very common approach, of course, is to let the user provide a username and password. If the user proves who they are, the STS then begins constructing the token the user has asked for. Tokens contain claims, however, information about this user, and so the STS must find that information somewhere. To do this, it relies on an account attribute store. One common example of this is Active Directory, but by no means is that the only choice. There are lots of ways to build STSs that don't require using AD or any directory service. But here, let's imagine the STS gets what it needs to construct the claims in this token. It then sends the token back to the user after digitally signing it. The user now has a token that he or she can use to access applications. We're now ready for a more complete view of the process. As I just showed you, it starts with the user authenticating and then getting a token. Notice, this is a summary of what I showed you in the previous slide. I've collapsed all those steps into step one here. I will keep on doing this. If I don't, the diagrams get too complex. But be aware, all of what I just showed you is actually happening here in step one. The user now has a token that he can send to an application he'd like to access. The application needs to process that token. This means that the app developer potentially has to write the code to do this, but since all sorts of applications will need to do this, it actually makes sense to provide a common identity library that does this on behalf of the application. Otherwise, it's just too difficult to write the code. Let's assume there is one there. That library does several things. It checks the token signature to make sure it wasn't tampered with, and it can also now figure out which IDP issued this token. The application need not necessarily accept this token. Instead, it maintains a list of trusted STSs, really trusted IDPs, which of these is it willing to accept tokens from? In this case, let's assume the application checks that list and decides that the STS that issued this token is one it trusts. That is, it believes that the claims in this token are true. If it's done that, it can then use those claims any way it likes. A very common way to use those claims is to make an access control decision to decide what kind of data this user is able to access.